here's what I love about our podcast. We talk about everything from silicon to hardware. Wow, those fingers look extremely large. Um, <laughs> silicon to hardware to software to the software stack across workloads, security, um, you know, AI, quantum, obviously. All of it's it's like fully rounded. But to me, it all kind of comes back to silicon. And maybe I'm just kind of, you know, biased that way. Uh, but with that said, uh, and going back to something I said a few minutes ago about, you know, all the attention being on, you know, kind of large language models and these large data sets that are being trained and everything's done in the cloud and it's an, an NVIDIA world that we all live in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, while all of that focus is on and all of the spotlight is on uh, kind of the, the large and, um, you know, kind of almost unmanageable AI implementations that force enterprises to go to cloud. Intel turns around um, and they they build upon what they've done with the Gaudi product line and IP and release Gaudi 3, which is, you know, they focus squarely on generative AI, but they take a slightly different approach. Whereas NVIDIA says, you know, we're going to stand up these, these uh, clusters that are going to cost hundreds of tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. You're going to run them in the cloud. Um, and you're going to reuse those for inference at some time, but it's really not going to be a power performance efficient kind of uh, scenario because of how, and cost efficient because of how much these things cost and, and how big they are. Gaudi comes in at a, at a different space, right? They, they, they build this ASIC that is very, um, very purpose designed and, and developed for, um, for training and for inference. And they focus on the meat of the market, which is the enterprise. They say, you know what, NVIDIA, you've got your, you know, your big honking uh, GPUs and clusters that you're going to deploy. But for Main Street, right, uh, for all of those enterprises out there that want to deploy uh, AI, but either can't afford it because it's so darn costly or don't have the, the, uh, power, um, the power budget and otherwise to deploy, uh, we have this thing called Gaudi, which is a fantastic accelerator. Did some benchmarking on it where it compares very favorably to NVIDIA. From a power efficiency perspective, it's about two and a half times better power efficient. From an inference perspective, it's about one and a half times better. In training, they've, they've also produced benchmarking that shows it outperforming the H100 uh, and the H200. Take that with a grain of salt. Every vendor out there creates benchmarks that show them in a favorable light. I get it, right? Yeah. Don't focus on the specific numbers, but do look at the spirit of what Intel is saying. You've got these language models. Yeah, you've got the really big ones that are going to run in the cloud, but more and more enterprises are realizing they want domain-specific and company-specific language models and foundation models. They want to run on-premises. Um, they're going to use that for... Um, you know, to create, uh, to create their and, and make their businesses more efficient through through generative AI, and this is this is Intel's answer to that. I really like what they're doing. They're not, you know, they're 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 focusing on real world application within the real world enterprises, and not kind of these theoretical um, approaches that a lot of other companies take uh, yeah. pie in the sky. And it seems to be it seems to be resonating with the market. Lots of good coverage on it. I wrote about it on Forbes. You can go ahead and read it. Um, but really, really like. And what I also like is they have this stood up through. You know, if you think about making AI work in the enterprise, it requires silicon. We just said it right. Silicon hardware, software, fr you know, frameworks. Everything needs to run in concert, and everything yeah. needs a little bit of of optimization to tie it all together. And uh, Intel's done a great job of building that ecosystem out so that enterprises can take these boxes, deploy them, and get up and running pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I know Paul you know, lives and breathes AI. You can see it. <laughs> he looks like an AI creation because he's so dark. <laughs> um, so, Paul, what are your, you know, what are your thoughts on, on what they're doing? And I understand it. It's not going to go into uh, uh, a high volume production until a third quarter of... Uh, Correct. Yeah, so I mean, we really won't see these in operation until sometime in 2025, probably. Correct. So yeah. it'll be interesting. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to, uh, of course, they're going to have to do something for CUDA and uh, provide an option for that, some, some alternative. And I understand they're working on that. So, yeah, it's yeah. a good system. I mean, 12, 40, you know, if you say 40% uh, 
uh, of the power. I mean, you know, that's worth a lot of money right there. So. It is. You know, the CUDA thing is interesting. You know, you find that abstraction being kind of um, being uh, pushed further and further up the stack. And then you have a lot of, there's a lot of efforts in the market. Uh, I know the Linux, Linux Foundation has their own, I think it's called UXL um, subcommittee that is looking at uh, kind of rendering CUDA as a non-essential part of the AI equation, which I think is is smart. Um, it has the usual suspects as part of it, right? Um, as you would imagine. Although AMD is strangely not in that. Uh, but, you know, the, the, CUDA, the CUDA challenge aside, which I think is going to resolve itself over time, um, you know, I just, I like the fact that they're focusing on kind of real world uh, application of AI uh, and real world, you, you know, inferencing kind of, going back to what Cisco is doing at the edge, right? Understanding that where these things are going to run, we're going to have to provide value. So, yeah, uh, I like, you know, I like the value, Matt. You kind of spoke to that sort of the balance in, in value for enterprises. I mean, you know, I think, you know, Jensen, when he when he talked about Blackwell, I think, you know, the the, the ASP is like in the $50,000 range, right? And so I think, you know, Gaudi, and I, you know, I caught Intel Vision remotely. I know that some of the team members were there, mm -hmm. but, but I was super impressed just with sort of the value that, that they intended to deliver with Gaudi. And I'm also continuing to be impressed with what Intel is doing with confidential AI, <clears throat> leaning yeah. into its investment in confidential computing, really to secure, um, you know, these next generation AI workloads. And, there, there was talk about that at, at Vision. And so I think that that's really strong. And I've actually worked, I mean, it's, it's going to be a gratuitous plug for, for some of the work I've done with Intel. But last year, I um, worked on a, on a paper that was commissioned by Intel around um, speaking to what it's doing with extensions and Xeon yeah. um, to facilitate confidential computing in the ecosystem that it's building. Yeah. It's doing the same thing with AI. And actually, I'm about to kick off a new paper that's going to yeah. focus on that. But it but also the ecosystem investment, um, the partnerships that Intel forges with NVIDIA and with others, I really, I really think it's going to provide a lot of um, momentum behind Gaudi as it as it enters production, as Paul mentioned in calendar third quarter. Yeah, I think the the whole I think it's called TPX, their their uh, security framework, uh, right. you know, the uh, encryption of, of uh, and enclaves of of uh, encryption along with. Obviously, encrypting uh, data that's sitting in physical memory is certainly a big play, and I, I like that it has minimal performance uh, hit. 